All right, here we go. We are live. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another video. Uh, this is a pre recorded video, however, it will come out. I'll probably chop it up in the clips because you guys do not like watching two hour interviews anyway. So, so, there you guys have it. But I do have a very special guest with me. His name is David with the Best Stock Strategy channel. And yeah, really cool dude. I checked out his channel, I love what he's doing. And David has a lot of experience with lawsuits and getting sued and calling out fake gurus. And so uh, I decided I wanted to bring him on this channel because I thought that it would be great insight for all of you guys to kind of see uh, the inner workings of how lawsuits work and all the bullying that takes place with these rich fake gurus. So, yeah. What's up, David? Hey, how are you? I'm very happy to be here. Good, good. Yeah, I'm good, too. So, yeah, before we went live, David and I were actually talking about courses uh, before we even get into everything. So, yeah, go ahead and say what you're going to say about courses, David, because, yeah, there are some of my followers who do not like people who sell courses. So Yeah, I, I think because um, when I watched your past video, a few people mentioned Carl and mentioned that he sells a course and therefore he's not credible and, and they were going to dismiss him. I do sell a course. However, my goal for being here is to provide as much valuable information as possible to you based upon my experience with litigation and defamation. Additionally, I do wholeheartedly believe that the majority of people would be better off by simply investing in an ETF, whether it be like QQQs or SPY or some type of combination of that. Well, I do definitely believe it's possible to achieve alpha or to achieve additional percentage above the S&P by investing in options. At the same time, um, human nature makes it so that when you use leverage, people have a tendency to trade too large. And because of that, I definitely believe that the majority of people, especially beginners, uh, would probably be better off just simply investing in an ETF and not purchasing any courses or anything of that nature. But at the same time, I am here to provide you with valuable information based upon my experience. And I hope that people don't automatically dismiss me and say, oh, well, he's a course seller or yeah. things of that nature, because um, I'm just here to, to help and provide some insight. Awesome. Yeah, definitely appreciate that. I think I think a lot of people are a little traumatized because, like I said, people like yourself and uh, for those who don't know, Carl is real PL guys. It's a YouTuber that I talked about who's also being sued. Um, I think because the most popular people on YouTube tend to be all the grifters and the scams and the foolishness and they all sell courses. I think they've unfortunately given courses a bad name, but I absolutely agree with you. I, I know people on YouTube who are genuine, good people who actually know what they're talking about that sell courses. And yeah, I agree with you. As long as you can prove that you're doing well in the market or that you really have experience or something to teach people and you're not some some grifter who just came on the scene a year ago and all of a sudden wants to pretend to be the next Warren Buffett, then yeah, I'm with you. I, I wholeheartedly believe that. I think also that human nature makes it so that people want something to come very easily. And when they see something where uh, a channel is promising, like 500% return or 3000% return a year, or, you know, making 2% a day without any experience returns like that, while extremely unlikely, I guess they are potentially likely, like, you know, one, not consistently, but maybe you can earn like 1% a day, like one out of one out of like, you know, once or once a week or so, if you take a significant amount of risk, but unfortunately, when you take that risk, then it's also going to come with significant portfolio volatility, and you have an extremely high likelihood of, um, of blowing up your account and losing money. When it comes, and I know that we're going to touch on this later on, I think that it's very important with, um, you know, with, with instructors on YouTube to look at and assess their intentions, because nobody is perfect. And if you think somebody is perfect, then that's just simply not true. We're all human beings, and we all make mistakes. But I do think that there's a big, you know, on, on like the spectrum um, of like who you trust versus who, who you believe has bad intentions. I think it's very important to try to ascertain whether you believe someone has their followers true intentions at heart or whether there's someone who's just looking to monetize their following after putting up like a, an exterior or a facade of them being like, you know, a perfect person or very likable. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so just moving on to the whole lawsuit thing and stuff like that. So I guess your backstory is you got sued, I guess, basically by a fake guru who then ended up being sued by what was it? The FTC, SEC? Well, 
I mean, to be fair, I I don't hold any ill will towards um, you know, towards the the people that sued me at all. So I, I don't I don't want to like call them um, fake okay. gurus. Like I also, to be honest, like um, when I made the videos in like 2018, um, I feel that like I was wrong and that I I would not have done that right now and that like I was overly aggressive. Like some of the words that I used are, are words that I probably would not have. That, that I wouldn't use now, um, you know, and I was very fortunate where I, I kind of got like bailed out by a few friends where I was able to take care of those lawsuits and didn't have to pay any money. But at the same time, I wouldn't, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say that, that those people, uh, I wouldn't say that those aren't my words, that they're fake gurus. Like, yes, the FTC like came after them. Um, I personally had nothing to do with that. And like, I don't have any ill will or anything. I'm just, Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying like like my experiences of, of what happened. Fair. Yeah. So can we get into those experiences? Like what exactly happened? Sure. Yeah. Do you want me to? So basically I made um I made a video about um Raging Bull and then also about about warrior trading. And then at first I received a um a cease and desist letter from Warrior Trading. Which is Ross Cameron, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And I think I received it from um, I forgot the, the exact law firm, but it was it was something in um, in like Las Vegas. Um, I have you know I still I have the information, but then basically like they sent me a like a mock complaint that they would file against me, and then requested that I um, that I remove the video. Um, and I think that they called me a few times. Now I was very ignorant in that at that time I I ignored it. Um, I think in hindsight, like everything could have simply been avoided. Had I gotten on the phone and just spoken to them, um, so I, I think that if anyone's in a similar situation, communication is really important. So I basically ignored it, and then they engaged a local law firm in Florida to to sue me for for defamation. And I think that was in like December of um, December of like 2018, I believe. And then because um, you know they thought that that I couldn't defend myself, then I was also sued in January of 2019 by Raging Bull. Now, the interesting thing about, about Raging Bull was that they sent me a cease and desist letter to take down my video, and they gave me like a week to comply. And I actually did comply. Like I took down the video because I just didn't want to deal with the stress. At the time, I was very overwhelmed. I really had no clue what I was doing. Um, I, at that time I didn't even have a lawyer and I actually, I had already gone to a TRO hearing, which is where the plaintiffs will go in front of the judge and ask for like an emergency injunction and say that, oh, we need this video taken down or this piece of content taken down ASAP. And there's like a high probability of success in this case, et cetera. So at that time when Ross did that, when he, um, when he asked for the, the emergency injunction, I actually didn't even have counsel. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even say a word at the hearing. Um, so then, you know, the judge granted the TRO. So the video was taken down. Then Raging Bull, the next month, um, they issued a cease and desist letter. I voluntarily took down the, the video because I just didn't want, I didn't want any stress or any drama. And then they sued me anyway. And yeah, I mean, that was, it was kind of like, uh, getting thrown into the fire where I had like no lawyers yeah. and nothing. And I basically had to like fend for myself. Now I was very, very lucky, but I, I definitely don't take it for granted that in my situation, you know, it could have turned out much differently had my friends not, not helped me because, you know, litigation is extremely, extremely expensive. And um, yeah. And, and even if you're right, then you can still lose. Yeah, there's a saying that when it comes to lawsuits, only the lawyers win at the end of the day. It's funny you say that. And I, I believe that probably in like nine out of 10 places, nine out of 10 cases, that's like 100% accurate. Where, well, the lawyer always wins because they get paid. But oftentimes um, you think that lawyers would be like above board and that they would do the right thing, that they, they would also be obsessed with the truth. But yeah. the reality is that in the cases that I've that I've worked with, Many of the lawyers are very, very shady. They'll 
accept changes in documents and then send you send you documents back that didn't have the changes that they agree to it, during oh, wow. uh, discovery, especially if the case is frivolous, they will sit on their hands and intentionally blow through deadlines. And then you're going to have to um, petition the court via motion to compel in order to get those documents. It's just really, uh, it, it's just like a dog and pony show. And it's kind of like a little bit of a carnival atmosphere, to, to be honest.